Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. Thanks for joining me today. Today I have another real-time tutorial for you. I have done this horse, this um, new forest pony in color pencil for Patreon in January and today I'm going to show you the process of how to create the front leg. So the leg that comes forward the most and I'm especially focusing on creating the very shiny coat. And of course, if you want to follow along with the whole uh, drawing from start to finish, you can have a look over on Patreon. It's available under the $7 here. So let's get started with the video and I hope you'll enjoy. Okay, I think I'm happy with this for now. I can always come back to it. Um, let's move on with the final leg. So exactly in the same way, I'm going to start with this again. I'm starting with Walnut Brown now. 177 and map out the darkest outlines first so this bottom line is quite dark And then right here we have a shadow. And then we here we have a very dark shadow going over the elbow like this and I'm sketching out that shape which is also a very important shape and shadow because it gives a lot of lighting to the rest of the body and I can actually just fill that in And then let's continue. Can outline this little bottom part. And then this bottom uh, leg area is quite light. So let's skip this and then I can sketch out this little piece of fur sticking out. And then we have some shadow and shapes right here on the knee again and on the upper arm.
very dark shadow right here on the side of the knee. Just sketching that out with walnut brown. And then continuing mapping out shapes. And then let's outline the hoof a little bit. The bottom is actually pretty damaged, so that doesn't need to be a very straight line. Alright, I'm jumping around a little bit, mapping out, taking my time to see all the shapes. Many different shapes in here. And the more I look at it, the more shapes I see, more darkness, the more abstract areas. Okay, and then let's do the rest of the outlining with some lighter colors. Let's add some cinnamon. Okay, so now I can do some coloring on those shadows again to make them a bit more vibrant. I'm adding burnt sienna, like right here, I see some reddish tone. Let's add burnt sienna right there. Bit of burnt sienna on the elbow.
All right, so that's it for the burnt sienna for now. Let's go ahead with a bit of caput mortis and violet. I'm going to darken up some of these shadows even more. So right here, just above the knee, can be darker. Still focusing on abstract shapes. On the knee it's all very purpley looking again, so here I can use quite a bit of Caput Morton Violet. And then here as well. Just drawing what I see. bunch of fur here. Let's also add a bit of reddish tone. I'm going to add some Venetian red again on top of these shadows. This leg comes, comes forward a lot, so that's why it looks quite big compared to the other ones. It also has loads of detail. Okay, and then let's move to cinnamon, do a little base layer. Actually, this area looks more yellowish, so I'm not going to add too much of the cinnamon there. Might add a bit of bister here for a base tone. I'm filling it in lightly. And also a little bit on the bottom half of the leg. This knee area. Then let's start glazing some color again. So I'm going to add a bit of violet to the knee. 138. 
actually let's take that up as well and let's also take it down and especially do some here on the foot and the wrist area Then I'm also adding some of the light magenta, especially here where I see quite a bit of pink. Um, right there a little bit, and then right here at the top. And then let's add a bit of yellow tone. I'm going to add some bister. And let's glaze that lightly on the upper arm. Let's go back to burnt sienna. I want to get back in a little bit of the red tone. And then a little bit of that middle cadmium red tone, especially here where I can see lots of red and then here on the side of the knee. And then slowly it's all coming together. Almost time to do some burnishing, but I want to get in one more time and adjust the shapes of some shadows here and there, add a bit more color here and there to make sure that the paper's filled up nicely. I also lost this uh, shadow a little bit, but I will, I will fix that. Maybe go over a bit with um, capital Violet.
All right, so let's darken up this fur next to the hoof. Let's outline this hoof a little bit, not by making it a very straight line, but I'm drawing small little dots almost to recreate the fur overlapping the hoof. A little bit of shading of brown. Then we can do the shading on the hoof later. But first we need to finish the, sh and the, the burnishing on this leg. more Venetian red here on the upper arm to make sure that it's not too yellow when we start burnishing. So I like to contrast yellow with red tones or pinkish tones. They work well together. All right, so now I feel that I can burnish. So let's take the white and blend this all out. focusing um, on one section at a time. So I'm not just going over this whole area in one stroke, but I'm starting here and then going up to the knee and blending that, going around the darkest shadows a little bit to make sure I don't lighten them up too much. And then move on to this section, switching between circular motions and strokes. I'm not burnishing the dark shadow here, so I'm going all the way um, up to this shadow, not burnishing that. Okay, so I quite like how this looks, but it does need a little bit more shading. So I feel like this bottom area got lightened up too much. I'm going along this outline with Burnt Sienna, taking that up a bit more. Focusing on the round shape of the arm. This shadow right here can be darker and more prominent.
adding some sanguine now. So when I've burnished, um, I'm using very little pressure when I use, when I uh, layer with more prominent colors like sanguine. Because they tend to show up really well after you've burnished. So I'm being careful with those. Going back to walnut brown for a second. Spend a little bit more time on this upper arm again. Adding some of the wrinkles in the skin. Very subtle, wrinkly lines. Okay, we're getting there. Always keep an eye on the shadows and the contrasts, making sure that the difference between light and dark stays high enough. So we want a big difference between light and dark on these shiny legs, otherwise they won't look shiny. So this is all about the contrasts. Increase the shadow right here on the knee, which is very prominent. For that I'm using Caput Mars and Violet. I wanted to say, let's add a bit more sky blue. So that's the four, uh, 146, which I'm glazing on top of the knee to give the knee a shinier effect. A little bit here as well, on the inside of the leg and a little bit right here. Quite like that, so that's nice. So I think I can start doing the hoofs now. So let's do that, starting with this one of course. And you can see that it has a bluish glow on it. So I think it's very good to start with Payne's Gray as a base layer. 181. And you can see that in the center we have a very bright highlight. 
and you can see all these horizontal lines in the hoof. The hoof is always growing, just like a tree, we have all those lines. The bottom is a bit damaged, so we see some shadow and damage on the bottom, which I'm recreating as well by making the bottom a bit darker here and there. This right side can be very dark. And let's keep this small line in the center open. Then I also see some other colors. I see a tiny bit of light magenta. If you look very closely at this bottom area, for instance, glazing a bit of light magenta on the whole hoof, but making sure to not add too much on that center line, which is highlight. And also a bit of blue, a bit of sky blue, 146. This I can add also on the center part. Let's erase some real brightness in the center. Leave that open. And so then... I'm also going to add some dark sepia, 175, to also add some warmth, and especially here on the right side, darken up this side as well. Keep your patience for this, we're almost done with this drawing, but the hooves are also important, so make sure to not rush it. I also have to say that to myself. don't need to do too much burnishing. I can burnish a little bit to make this all a bit smoother, avoiding the center because that doesn't have enough layers on it. Making sure to follow this horizontal motion. And finally, taking Payne's Gray one more time Increasing contrast one more time. Adding some texture. And that is it. For this hoof. Alright, so that concludes 
with this video for today. I'll show you a whole picture of what the drawing turned out like. I hope you like it and let me know what you think of it in the comments below. And if you want to support my work and also follow along with dozens of real time projects like this one, have a look over on Patreon. And there's also a link in the description that shows an overview of all the tutorials I have available. So if you want to check first, um, if it's something for you, um, check the tutorial library in the description as well. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support and I'll see you in the next video.